even if we did achieve what we wanted with a very small state, we'd just be resetting the clock back to 1776 and it would roll forward exactly the same way again. Hi, I'm Matt Welch. I'm here for Reason TV at Freedom Fest in Las Vegas, and I am pleased to be joined today by Stefan Molnieu. Uh, you are the founding f hoo ha of. Tell us about your radio station. It's Free Domain Radio, sort of Free Domain One Word, FreeDomainRadio.com. My basic argument is the consistent application of the non aggression principle and a respect for property rights leads you to a stateless society, you know, kind of like it or not. And so you could call that sort of anarcho capitalism, the anarcho being no rulers. Uh, and the capitalism part being a respect for property rights. This seems to be a growing tendency out there in the world. Is that your impression too? In America, there's more of discussion along these lines. I think the way that it's been going is that there was hope. <laughs> A long time ago, there was this little flower, you know, and the state has just come along and squished it. The energy that, that was provided to the movement by Mises, by Rothbard, by Rand, by, you know, all of the real founders of the movement, I think gave people a lot of hope. And, and the, you know, the Goldwater campaign, the Reagan movement, uh, even the Gingrich movement in the 90s, people had a huge amount of hope that we could use the lasso of uh, principles to bring down this charging bison of the state. And I think in sort of the 20, 25 years since there was a real resurgence in libertarian political activism, and I think quite an effective resurgence. I mean, the Libertarian Party didn't do hugely well, but its influence on the Republican Party has been enormous, I think. And it really has not worked in any way, shape, or form. I mean, the government is, what, five to eight times bigger now than it was in the 70s when the movement started, with the goal of reducing it. And so, right. and its growth seems to be, you know, it's... A permanent yeah, feature. I mean, it's massive and it's ever increasing. So I think people are saying there's something wrong with the political approach. There's something wrong with trying to restrain the beast called the state. Right. Uh, you know, that's already making the compromise to begin with. Like you're ceding the territory by, you know, well, like the argument, yeah, school vouchers is is selling out. Yes. Right? Well, school vouchers is just a way of you know, giving the public sector unions more control over private schools in the long run. I think that's the way it's going to work, right? My theory is that if you look at the big scope of history, you've got small governments that crop up for a variety of reasons from time to time, either ideologically or a government collapses or there's some war which leaves a territory vacuum in the middle or a power vacuum in the middle. Rome started as the smallest government of the time with, you know, real focus on trade and infrastructure and, you know, minimal interference in trade, grew to be a massive empire. If you look at England when it started experimenting in free trade, what grew out of that was the British Empire. If you look at America, which is the experiment of the smallest conceivable government, what grows out of that is the largest government the world has ever seen. And my argument is when you have a small government, you create free trade. You create the you know, classic sort of um, uh, von Miesian or Austrian economics argument, which is that if you don't interfere, you get massive efficiencies. You get the correct or rational allocation of resources through the price system without the interference of the swords of the state. So when you have a small government, you get a huge amount of free trade. You get a massive growth in wealth. And then the government goes, hmm, <laughs> that's quite a lot of wealth. And so it starts to scoop and scoop and scoop. And the taxes can go up. And it can also use the wealth that's being created and its tax powers as collateral for borrowing. Right. And then once the government can borrow, it can buy votes in the present by selling off future generations, which is kind of where we are now. So my argument would be, even if you do collapse the state to something very small, you then create this huge growth in wealth, which the government will then use to grow. And so I think my argument is, even if we did achieve what we wanted with a very small state, we'd just be resetting the clock back to 1776, and it would roll forward exactly the same way again. And the only way to break the cycle is not to lower the dimmer switch, but, you know, push it and turn off the light. Well, that's uh, about the most persuasive argument of, of uh, anarchy that I've personally heard. So oh, really? Congratulations oh, on that's that. that's good. It's hard for Would me. you like a, another one? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> a squishes. It's, uh, it's not so easy. No, I'd, I would love it if politics worked and, and if education worked. And, and I, I mean, wouldn't that be great? Because it's not... To talk to people about a small state is a hugely different conversation than to talk to people about no state. Uh, and so, you know, it's sort of the difference between saying to someone, I think you should cut down on your food or, or saying, you shouldn't eat at all. <laughs> That's how people sort of receive it. Say, well, yeah, okay, I should cut down on my donuts or whatever. No food at all. Are you crazy? And so if, and particularly in libertarian objectivist circles, you know, like the whole, holy trinity of the small state, right? The police, the law courts, and the military. People will say, let's shrink it down to that. They can still conceive of how it would work. But when you start talking about, you know, private uh, dispute resolution agencies, private defense agencies, I mean, there's these short circuits that go off in people's heads and suddenly the matrix just shimmers and they sort of, you know, turn inside out and it becomes a really challenging conversation. 
But I think that it's something that needs to be discussed because it would be a real shame if we were chasing the government back down to something small that then becomes a su- like you know how stars they collapse and then they go supernova. That to me is real the real cycle. We crush the state back down again through incredible efforts of of, of blood and propaganda and and reasoning and argument and you know fractured relationships and wars and all that, and then it just keeps blowing up again. So. I'm just really interested at least exploring on how we might be able to break that cycle. Shimmering the Matrix here in Las Vegas with Stefan Molyneux. Thank you very much. For Reason TV, I am Matt Welch.